Alrighty, so we're obviously getting a brand new Roxy, which is very interesting. She already kind of got leaked a little while ago, but we are getting Awakened Roxy. I think she's deemed to be Crazy Roxy is kind of how they're sort of marketing her, uh, which is very interesting. And her kit is very cool as well. We have uh, her just sort of normal sort of cut in her, her actual like illustration here um, and her outfits which are pretty cool they actually showed them off a little bit later in the video what you've seen in the video right there was the ultimate animation which was pretty cool they did do a little bit of pvp with her as well um if you'd like to i did i just did a stream and everything the the big basic takeaways is that she's basically going to be for human teams um we'll actually go over her skill translations and everything as well but um Obviously, they didn't do a very good job of showing her off in the PvP that they do on the live streams, just like normal. Um, they basically showed uh, you want to use her with as many humans as possible, and for some reason they threw Deanne on the team for whatever reason, uh, which was just kind of a bit awkward. They did use her against Mael. I think that uh, the team that they're using could be improved a little bit or changed around, or just there, there's probably going to be a much better team to run with her. Uh, so let's go over the character itself. She is Frenzy Roxy from the translations, but I assume it'll be translated to crazy probably on um, on global if I had to guess, but maybe not. Who knows? Might, might end up just being Frenzy Roxy. Uh, but she has a very interesting kit. So... She has, for every human race in the battle, increases 40% crit chance to herself, which means that if all of your allies on the field at the beginning, so three allies, would be 120% crit chance increase. Uh, when, at, when human allies crit while using single target skills, inflicts da uh, additional damage of 300% of her attack at the start of the turn. So the start of the turn thing is a little bit weird because if we actually go over to um, the the gameplay itself, uh, I don't know if this is going to be like the greatest positioning for uh, using her. I think that they're just showing off her stats right here. Yeah, okay. So you can see they, they have a level 2 of her flood card first, which is a single target flood, and once they attack with her, um, she does get a lot of crits because of her crit chance, and then you see a little bit of extra residual damage, almost like the Scorch damage from Escanor, uh, which kind of threw me off at first because her skill is legitimately just a flood skill. Like you can see, it's a single target flood ability, um, which is kind of odd, Like, but the the... The Scorch damage almost, I'm calling it Scorch, but the additional damage that it deals, from my understanding, is for all human race allies, but I'm not entirely sure on that. Uh, we'll kind of have to just wait for maybe some more official translations or wait for it to come out on Global or just t tomorrow whenever the you know the JP and KR players get their hands on it. I'm sure there will be a little bit more info there. Um, she does have a new thing called a Bond. This is a brand new mechanic that they're, they're introducing. I'm assuming that's the biggest reason why they're doing this live stream in the first place. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember exactly where they sort of showed it off at. Um, you can kind of see it here. It looks like a grace, but it it functions a lot like a grace as well. So it's basically just something that you're going to throw. If you use her in the association slot or the link slot, whatever you call it, uh, for a character, they're basically going to gain this just like they would a grace. So very interesting mechanic there. I don't know what is going to deem a character worthy enough to gain a grace or a bond. Um, but it's kind of interesting, I guess, that she's the first character to get one. I assume that's going to be sort of like a selling point that they're going to use for maybe OC characters uh, in the future. Because, uh, honestly, you know, catastrophes aren't the most hyped thing you've ever seen. And a lot of people don't really care too much for the Ragnarok stuff. Uh, I, I actually really enjoy the OC content that they do. I think that they do a really good job. And I think that they do a really good job with the designs and animations and everything for the characters. I think that they're really cool. But, I, you know, a lot of people are here for the Seven Deadly Sins IP, which is unfortunate. Uh, or, well, I say unfortunate but it's to be expected I guess I didn't really mean to say unfortunate there but uh, her bond is the bonded human race unit gets 10% attack related stat boost so I'm not sure if this is for like it says bonded human race unit I don't know if that means that because she's a human race unit that's what it's saying or if you have to use it on a human uh, which if that's the case is very interesting and it leaves um, a little bit it's a little bit more restricted of course than a grace but it's also kind of interesting because the human human race has a lot of like a lot of units that you can sort of mess around with in this game but none of them are like super crazy good or anything like i mean obviously the escanors are good but the, the human race as like a as a pvp sort of meta sort of falls in and out of the meta uh depending on you know them having relevant characters or whatever the newest festival is at the moment so um 
I don't know. There's a lot of potential there at the same time, but it is kind of restricted. So I'm, I'm very interested to see how it sort of plays out. Like I said, she does have a single target flood card. Her AOE card is a spike card. But um, if we, well, I, I've unfortunately already messed around and moved the uh, the thing here. If we watch the uh, the gameplay a little bit more, um, she does she does her single target card and then she does her AOE after, if I'm not mistaken. Or no, he uses a flood card this turn or the scorch card from uh, Escanor this turn. Um, sorry, I'm gonna have to move around a little bit. Okay, so he does use the. AOE card here, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's the next turn. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Yeah, so here's the AOE card. Uh, I'm pretty sure he uses one when he goes up against all three of the characters, but it really, it just doesn't do a whole lot of damage. I'm not sure on the specifics there. I assume they want you to run her with the new blue mono because the blue mono just got a relic, or the new awakened mono just got a relic to where it helps um, catastrophes do more AOE damage, of course. So... I guess that makes a lot of sense, but she's not restricted to just the Catastrophe team, which is great. That's really what I wanted to see more than anything, because I don't want to invest into the Catastrophes any more than I have to, because really, they're just not very good. Uh, who knows? Maybe maybe with this character on the team, they could be a lot better. I'll definitely try them out for myself, but I don't have high ultimate levels or anything like super crazy built up for a lot of my Catastrophes, so I'll just kind of have to take it at face value and maybe take somebody's word for it. But her ultimate is a sever skill as well, which is pretty cool. Can't really complain about that. Um, other than that, they did show off two new relics, which are fantastic. Uh, I don't know if they showed them off right here or not in the live stream oh they did so the big one is that assault mode meliotis is finally getting a relic which is big news a lot of people have been waiting on that uh his relic is pretty interesting i'm not exactly sure on the wording of this but it is at the start of the battle increases base stats by 30 percent for two turns which is pretty big hopefully those are blue buffs so that way he can use it on his amplify card um i imagine you might not want to use esterosa with him but at the same time esterosa is really good so i'm not 100 percent sure there because he's going to end up removing your buffs or maybe you just run a different grace unit instead I don't know, maybe in front of him, so that way his grace isn't, uh, or his uh, commandment, sorry, isn't being activated to remove your buffs. But it is, at the start of the battle, increases basic stats by 30% for two turns. When, uh, when he doesn't get damaged on enemy turns, applies the same buff you gained at the start of the match again. So if they, a, a big strat for going up against Assault Mode originally was that if they don't attack you, uh, you don't gain buffs, so you can just move cards around, go for an ultimate, and then just white melee that way. But if you don't do it like that, or if you try to do that now, he's going to gain more basic stat increase. So that's really good. It's a way to help prevent them from just cheesing the team, I guess. And then the very last part is for every buff on him, increase base, uh, base stats by 5% up to 3 times max. So I'm assuming... From my understanding, the way that this would work is that at the very beginning of the battle, you're going to get 30% basic stat increases, and I would assume that it's going to be all three stats getting a buff, so HP, defense, uh, and attack. So that is going to be three buffs, which means that you would immediately get a 15% basic stat increase from having those buffs, but I'm not 100% sure on that, of course. Um, and then second up, we did get an Ominous Nebula Zeldris Relic as well. Um, I think the big thing here is that even though Ominous Nebula Zeldris wasn't like the greatest, craziest unit of all time, I think it's a little bit early for him to be getting a relic, really, because the demons are still really relevant in the meta at the moment. So it's kind of weird that they would give more demon support right now. But of course, uh, people have been asking for relics, and Nidhogg is the most relevant, you know, monster at the moment. And it seems to be a lot of sort of demons and uh, commandment sort of relics that he's getting. So. I guess it, it is what it is. Um, his relic is increase base stats by 3% and attack by 4% per debuff on the enemy, and it stacks up to four times. So a pretty decent little increase there. Um, it really solidifies the fact that the, the the demon team is kind of moving in sort of like a debuff meta kind of uh, like debuff centric sort of team, uh, which is a bit unfortunate because Margaret is so relevant in the meta right now. But um, yeah, those are the biggest things that they kind of showed off. I am very interested in seeing how the character goes uh, because honestly this new Roxy is pretty sweet I love her outfits and everything uh, the fact that she has a new mechanic with the bond stuff is really cool but uh, yeah I am currently waiting on the patch notes to come out I don't think they're out just yet 
Uh, it doesn't look like it, but um, I don't know. I'll probably post this as a video. If there's anything relevant in the patch notes that isn't already shown here, I might end up making an extra video for it, but uh, I normally try to wait for the global patch notes to do an entire breakdown on those, uh, and it's always kind of redundant to do a video on the JP patch notes and then turn around and do them again for global. So uh, I normally just skim through, look at all the pictures and everything. Um, I think best case scenario, I, I think I might actually wait for just a few minutes and whenever they come out, I'll look over the banner um, and then if there's anything else of relevance, I'll kind of show that as well. So I will be right back, but just hold on for a second and I'm sure it'll be there for you guys. Alrighty, so the patch notes are finally out. So let's look over the banner and everything. We've already gone over the character. Uh, it is a 600 banner, so do be aware of that. And it looks like it's going to be mainly... Uh, it's basically all OC characters, but we do have a couple of decent pulls in here. We have Freya and Freyer, but a lot of a lot of clog in here as well. A lot of uh, filler stuff with uh, some of the older sort of catastrophe units. Not crazy, but honestly, not a terrible banner. At least you have uh, some decent options from Ragnarok in here. Like I said, it is a 600. Let me skim through the actual patch notes really quickly just to see. So. It looks like we are actually getting a story chapter. They did show this image off, uh, or at least both of these images off in the um, the live stream itself. So we might actually be getting a seven seven scourges, seven catastrophes actually like storyline going, which is kind of cool. Honestly, all of the uh, the story stuff that they do in the game is normally pretty good on just like decent rewards. Uh, it looks like we have a new set of cards. I don't know if there's an actual effect like card set for this or not. It doesn't look like it. We obviously have the new relics that we went over. Uh, they are giving out a free outfit. I assume this is free. Maybe not. Maybe you have to buy this. I'm not 100% sure on that, but there is a new outfit. It's like a matador themed outfit for Freya. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of the way it looks, to be honest with you. Um, there's obviously some new bundles going on. They're bringing back the step-up bundles, for, but they're with tickets this time. Uh, they haven't done step-up bundles in quite a long time, but you can see here that they have uh, some step-up bundles with some tickets and everything for the new banner, of course, and a lot of pendants and stuff like that as well. And then on the last step, you just get pure diamonds, which I guess is cool. Um, not exactly sure how that's going to go, but... Uh, New diamond bundle looks like like a weekly like one week long bundle, uh, which is fine. Couple of other sort of regular bundles. We do have them going over the it's called a unity maybe for them, but that, I don't know. It kind of got translated in the uh, the stuff as bonds. Um, if characters with unity are organized in the main team or bond uh, characters. The effect of unity will be applied to the character on the main team. So. Uh, just basically kind of like a grace. I assume they have restrictions though, since we went over it earlier, I assume that hers is going to be for human only. Um, they are also doing the improvements for the brawl shop now. So the conditions for the obtaining rewards in the brawl shop and obtaining high shops or higher shops will be changed, uh, from the blah, blah, blah. Um, so basically you can see here that the, 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 like bar that you have to fill up is completely different. I'm assuming this is not going off of like the amount of items that you've bought at this point because uh, th that would be ridiculous. So that is getting a little bit of a rework. It looks like we're improving color vision support function. So I'm assuming like the colorblind modes. Um, improved team formation menu. So that is kind of cool. Added filter functionality. So whatever. Uh, we do get a special login bonus. So we get a free ticket for 14 days, which is kind of peculiar because that's one multi and four singles. I'm not 100% sure on that, unless these are multis, which I am doubtful. Um, if that's like a, 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 if those are multis, that'd be ridiculous, but I, I highly doubt it. Um, it's login bonus, blah, 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 blah. Uh, rewards from the login bonus at the end of the event period. So, I mean, I guess it looks like we're getting a, a decent amount of like free stuff. There also is this, they showed off where there's basically gonna be a mileage event where if you spend up to 900 diamonds, you get a ticket right here. And it looks like these are the five characters that are gonna be on the ticket. I don't know if it says if you can choose them or not. Uh, oh, it says you can select one of the units from above. So this is a, an easy way to get a copy of Freyr um, or any of these other characters if you need them. But obviously this is a 600 banner and you have to spend 900 gems to get it. So they're wanting you to push a little bit. That's a little unfortunate. I'm not sure how many people are actually going to get use out of that. I've got to be honest, unless I just end up spending 300 gems on extra stuff after I get done with my rotation on the banner, I'm probably not going to meet the requirements for this. So... 
whether you should go for it or not, I guess is up to your account. If you don't have Freyr and you've been having a hard time getting him, it might be worth it for you to get an easy copy of him there. Uh, obviously, they're bringing back some of the catastrophe events and everything, so nothing too crazy. Uh, obviously, Awakened Roxy is going to be one of the uh, people that you fight now. They are getting a new Hawk Pass. Okay, so that's where the Matador outfit comes into play. It is the Hawk Pass event uh, skin for them, and it looks like that's pretty much it. So, yeah, very interesting stuff. Definitely let me know what you think about the new Roxy and the new banner, of course. Um, obviously, the new uh, Bond system or Unity system. I think maybe Bond is like the what they translate to like being a Link character. Uh, so maybe it's called a Unity. I'm not entirely sure on that yet, but uh, I'm, I'm very interested. I think the character looks really good. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Feel free to subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.